Hi there, this is Ed Herzog and in this video what I want to do is I want to show you how to create a table of contents using the new Elementor table of contents widget. Now you may have seen another video of mine in which I show you how to create a table of contents using the menu anchor widget. That method still works if you have Elementor free. But if you have Elementor Pro, then you're much better off using the new table of contents widget. First of all, you'll have more styling options. Second of all, there's a the possibility that Google will pick up your table of contents and display it in their search results. So I'm going to switch over to my desktop and I'll take you through a tutorial on how to create a table of contents with the new Elementor widget. So here we are on one of my blog posts called 15 free online tools to grow your business. Now here you'll see the new table of contents widget at work. So you can see it right here. I've got the table of contents set up. And the advantage of this is that, you know, this is a long blog post. I mean, this is pretty long and not everybody is going to be interested in all the 15 tools that I have here. People have different interests, so they can go exactly the part of the blog post that they're interested in. So one person may come here and say, you know, I'm interested in a free graphic design tool. So they can click here and boom, it takes, it, takes them right to the part they want to go to. Somebody else may be interested in, let's see here, website engagement. So they click on that and it takes them right to that part of the blog post. So, you know, people don't want to waste time nowadays. They want the information that they need and they want it right away. And having a table of contents on your posts or perhaps on your pages helps people get the information they want. And, you know, that helps your business because, you know, people like that. They, you know, they can get what they want and, you know, that creates positive feelings for your business. So, you know, that's the value of the advantage of using a table of contents within your posts or your pages. Now you can also see here, here I've Googled boost online sales. And you can see that Google sometimes will display a table of contents, a, you know, kind of a preliminary table of contents within, that's, you know, within a blog post. Now I actually have a, a post that, uh, you know, is basically on this topic, but Google only picks one table of contents per topic. And so in this case, I'm not a big enough name to, to rank. You know, they're displaying here from wordstream.com. Uh, but this gives wordstream.com a big advantage uh, relative to the other posts here that are not displaying that. And so, you know, people are going to click on this so they can, are, can see what they're going to get in the post. And Elementor, because of the way they designed it, you at least have the possibility of your posts showing up in Google this way here. So that's the advantage. That's the other advantage of using this new table of contents widget that Elementor has created. So now I'm on the blog post that I just showed you. I'm on the Elementor backend here. And, you know, obviously I already have the table of contents created. It's right here. But I want to take you through how to create one from scratch. So we'll just drop a new widget in here. Drop that in there. And boom. Now, the first thing you're going to notice now on my table of contents here on the real one, I've got 15 items. Each item corresponds to one of these right here. And it's picking up the, you know, for example, here it's picking up email opt-in forms. It's not picking up convertful. But when I first drop it in here, you can see it's picking up a lot more. It goes 1, 2, 2.1, 3, 3.1, all the way down to 16.11.1. So it's picking up a lot of stuff on the page that I don't want in my table of contents. You know, it's picking up all my headings, regardless of, you know, whether or not I want them in there. because at this point, Elementor doesn't know what you want in your table of contents. You have to tell it what you want. You know, it's picking up things all the way down into my footer. So how do you change this? Well, what I suggest is you really need to think through which, how you put your uh, header tags, right? Your H2, H3, H4, H5, uh, and then even potentially H1. Automatically, it will pick H2 through H5, and you can very easily eliminate these. You can also add H1 if you want to use H1. In my case, I already have this set up so that the tags that I want to use are H2, and the ones that I don't want to use are H3, H4, H5, and H5, and H6. There we go. So eliminate those, and it's almost there. There is one exception here, though. I also have an H2 tag on this title up here. So how do I eliminate that? What I need to do is I need to come here, I go to advanced, and then under advanced again, I enter a class name, a CSS class name. I enter it without a dot. It's very important. Here, I enter it without a dot, the thing that I want to exclude from my table of contents. 
I then come back down to this table of contents. And here this is include, include by tags. Here I'm going to exclude, exclude by selector. So I'm going to put that same selector, the word intro, but this time I'm going to include the dot. So I put dot intro and boom, it's gone. It now starts with website page builder. And that's basically how you set it up. Now you can, you know, you've got options here obviously then to configure it the way you want. If, I, if you don't want numbers, you can do bullets. And you can change right here the icon if you don't want a bullet, if you want some other icon, you can do that. You can also change the title on the table of contents. Now this is automatically an H4 tag. You can change that if you want for some reason. You can, you know, you can write write whatever whatever you want for your for the title of your table of contents. I can put table of contents free online tools. And it shows it that way. You know, however you want to have it, you can do it. We'll just keep that right now for table of contents. Then come down here. Now then you've got additional options. So you can come down here. A lot of these work best uh, are related to responsive view, to mobile and to tablet. Um, so let's take a look at that. I'm going to switch over to the mobile view real quick. Now one of the things is you have the option to have it display like this in mobile view. So it's not automatically open. That is this right here. It says minimize box. You can turn that on or off. If you turn it off, it will automatically be open when people load your page on both desktop as well as mobile and tablet. You can also set a different breakpoint for that if you want to minimize it just for mobile, not for tablet. You can do that as well. Let's turn that minimize back on for a moment. And so with the minimize, you get these icons. You get the icon to open it and to close it. And you can change that right here. Uh, and we can open it. The other thing you've got here is this word wrap. Again, this is m much more important for responsive design. If I come down here, uh, let me actually go back up here. I oh, know, actually it's fine that way, sorry. Scroll down here. What you're gonna see, for example here, meeting and appointment schedule. You see the dot is there. It's not really aligned very well. Same thing here, video hosting and, and marketing platform. It's not aligned very well. So what I can do is I click on word wrap. Now it's not gonna display the full title anymore. It's just gonna say video hosting and marketing with dots afterwards, but it, dots afterwards, but at least it's aligned properly now. Now it looks better. Without the word wrap on, I don't know. For me, it doesn't look very, very nice. So I like to have that on for responsive view because that way then, you know, it'll look better for people who are looking at it on mobile. Um, now again, as I said, this minimize box thing, which you can turn on and off, you can minimize it on tablet, on mobile, or on none. Obviously, if you pick tablet, it'll do tablet and mobile, or you can just do mobile or none. So you've got that option. You can also, you know, again, when I first showed you, uh, let me switch back over to, let's get bullets off, switch it back over to numbers, and I'm going to add back in H3 tags for a moment. Come back up here. We can now go back up to desktop view, which will be easier. Okay, so here I've got the hierarchical view, right? It's taking my H1 and H3s, and these ones, these one, ones here are H3. So it's creating a hierarchical view. So it's saying one is website builder, and then 1.1 is Elementor. Two is email marketing, 2.1 is MailChimp, etc. I can turn the hierarchical view off, but I will show you what it, what it will do here. It won't eliminate these ones, it will just uh, eliminate the hierarchical hierarchical part of it. So if I come down here, again, go to additional options, turn that off. What's going to do now, you see web page builder is number one, Elementor is number two, email marketing number three, MailChimp number four, etc. So at least for me, this is not what I want, right? Because I don't really, you know, these are web page builder and Elementor are part of the same thing. Elementor is my choice for the free web page builder. Uh, MailChimp is my choice for the free email marketing. These aren't separate things. So for me, you know, I wouldn't want to use this. But again, it's going to depend on how you have your table of contents, how you have your blog post structured. You know, this hierarchical, hierarchical view may have value for you. Um, so let me take this out again, the H3s, because I do not need those in my table of contents. And what else? 
You've also got something called collapse sub-items. It says, ooh, this is hard to read. Uh, should only be used if the table of contents is, is made sticky. So that would be something you'd be using on your sidebar. You can collapse the sub-items. And I'll actually show you an example later on in this video of somebody who has it on their sidebar and, and how that looks. It's actually a pretty neat function. Um, so then from here, you know, you've got the basic si styling options for, for Elementor. You can change the background color of the box. If I want to make it green, I can make it green. If I want to make it purple, I can make it purple. Obviously, I'd want to change the text color then, but I can do that. Make that back to white. I can change the border color. I can change the border width, border radius. I can add padding, put a minimum height, and add a box shadow. So you've got all those options. Then, of course, you can uh, customize the header. You can change the background color just for the header. So just like that and not for the whole box. And you can change the text color. I'm going to make that green. Nope, that did not come out. Let's see here. That's interesting. So that does not seem to actually, I'm not sure what that changes then. Let's just clear that then. Typography here, you've got your typography and you can uh, set it up how you want in terms of, you know, your fonts, sizes, everything right there, line height, you know, typical Elementor stuff. You can also change the color of the icon, which I don't have displayed right now, but you can change that. I also change the separator width, you know, if you want to want more width between uh, the table of contents and the display, this there's a light bar there. You may not be able to see it very well. You might be able to see it right here. You can see it better. So that's changing that separator width is changing the width of that. Uh, and then you can change your list again. Now here you've got options for normal, hover, and active. So again, you can change the text color, you can change the color. Uh, let's see, you can turn the underline on or off so that when they hover, it shows underline. Again, change the text color, that did work. Not sure why I couldn't change the color of the of table of contents. That was a little interesting, a little strange. Uh, let's go back to that. You can change the color of the marker. So again, it should be changing the color of the the bullet or the number there. Let's see if I can get a different one. If I make it white, yeah, it'll disappear because the background is white. But yeah, it did change the number there. So you can change the colors of that. Again, you can change the size of everything, however you want. Uh, and then you can, you know, you can do the same thing. Oops. You can do the same thing over on the hover. You know, if you want to look different when people hover, or, you know, if you want the active one that they're looking at uh, to be different in some way. So you've got all those options. And then obviously you can come over here. You've got the advanced options as you do for anything, margins, padding, motion effects, motion effects, etc. you know, typical Elementor widget. So that's basically it. You know, again, you can design this how you want. Again, this is how it looks when I first kind of put it in here, but then I change it so it looks how I want. I've got a light gray background. I, you know, changed the fonts of what I want. I made this a purple color since purple is one of the colors I use on my page. Uh, and that is pretty much it. You also have, I do want to show another option here. In terms of including, you know, what you want to include, include in here, there's an option here that says container. It's not entirely clear what that is. There is a comment on the, on the Elementor page when they release this. Just wait a second for this to load up. Here we go. And somebody says, I just noticed the container box, but had no idea what input expects. Tried CSS ID, but it's not that. Then tried selecting an, an HTML tag to the post body section using article HTML tag and under article in the table of contents container box and it worked. That does not work for me. If I enter article, it says no heading, headings were found in this page. So I don't know, you know, whatever it's looking for here, you know, at least one person for them, it was article, but that doesn't seem to work for me. So. I don't know exactly what that is. They haven't perhaps explained that very well, it doesn't seem, in, their, in uh, you know, Elementor's own explanations. If you want to use that, I suggest reaching out to customer support because I'm not entirely sure what you would enter in there. As I said, somebody entered article, it worked for him, didn't work for me. 
So uh, the other thing I want to show you here before I end the video is what it looks like on a size on a sidebar. So we've got this page here. Let's create an Elementor. Now this person has right here again the typical table of contents, and again you can click, and it takes you right there. What is the best way to invest money? Uh, you can go here. Uh, how not to invest money? Boom, right there. Now you're going to see they've also got on their sidebar here this sticky sidebar, right? And I've got a video you may have seen on how to create a sticky sidebar. If you're not sure how to do that, you can check out that video. What you're going to see here is as I scroll down, different parts are going to open up and close depending on where I'm at on the page. It's a pretty interesting and unique feature. So watch, you know, watch over here. Watch how this is opening up. So he's got a 1.1 or 1.2. He's not showing them up top. But it does have them showing here, and they are opening up as I hit those. Right here it says this is 1.2 potential outliers that we might not encounter that helped Warren Buffett. And right here it's open on the sidebar. As I scroll down, that's going to close. And I guess he didn't have any sub-bullets here for this one, so nothing new opened up. When we come down here, and how not to invest money, he's got several different sub-bullets. So again, those are opening up as I'm scrolling past it. So it just helps people a little bit more know where they're at within the context of your blog post. It's a kind of neat and unique feature. Now, you, you can see that some of it didn't show up very well. There is a, I'm seeing 4.1, 4.2. It looks like there's a 4.3. That is not showing up, so that may be, you know, uh, something that needs to get fixed on Elementor's end or that you may need to play around with. So it's not really showing me everything. Now here we've got five along with 5.1 and 5.2. And then you come down here, he's got, uh, you might also like section. So that is basically, you know, how a sticky sidebar table content, you know, the person can also click and if they want to go back up to the top, this is kind of nice. They can just click there and go back up to the top. If they want to go here, they go there, then they go here. So, you know, they don't have to, you know, on my page, the challenge here, because I don't have the sidebar, they've got to keep you know, coming back up to the table contents and clicking on what they want. If you've got it here on a sidebar, and particularly if it's sticky the way this is, they do have that option to just kind of, oh, okay, here I can go there, and now I can go here, and then I can go there. Uh, you know, they don't have to keep scrolling back up to this table of contents that it's got right up here. So that is it. That is my quick tutorial and run through on how to create a table of contents using a new, new table of contents widget in Elementor. If you have questions, if you have comments, please let me know. I will answer questions as quick as I can. I always like to help people out. Um, please subscribe to my channel. I've got lots more videos coming out. Um, my goal is 200 some videos in 2020. So I'm going to be giving a lot of videos on Elementor as well as other tools and tips and strategies that can help you grow and build your online business. And if you like this video, if you found it valuable, please give me that thumbs up. I definitely appreciate that sort of feedback. It lets me know that I'm producing content that is of value and of help to you. So that is it. I hope you have a great day and I will see you on the next video. Bye.